in this lesson, we will be discussing spline points and checkpoints. Spline points are how you determine where your driving line will go. In other words, the path the router takes. Every time you start a new track, the game will prompt you to place two spline points, the start and end of the driving line. But we're going to create a more dynamic track by adding spline points, which will allow us to add curves to our drive line. We will begin by opening a new track and placing two spline points by hitting the X button. You will notice the spline points are paired with two checkpoints. They are the start and finish checkpoints. Like spline points, you will need at least two checkpoints for each track to mark your start and finish. Initially, the checkpoints will be aligned with the spline points, but you can move them or any other checkpoints in your track to anywhere you want in between the first and last spline points. Now, let's add a curve to our driving line. Select the last spline point and copy it by pressing triangle. Spline points cannot be placed from the menu, only copied from existing spline points. You can also add spline points as you lay down the initial drive line by hitting triangle to copy a spline point and then continue laying down the drive line. One thing to keep in mind when copying spline points, the new spline point will always come after the spline point it was copied from. You see, if I place it behind the point I copied it from, it creates a sharp turn that cannot be ridden, signified by the driving line turning orange, telling you there's a problem. It is possible to place a point behind another, but for now, we will take the new spline point and place it past the one we copied it from and further back to create a nice curve. Before we continue, let's take a look at the spline point icon. It has two useful items on the icon. First is the distance from the starting checkpoint in meters. This will come in handy later when we're looking at skill games, especially if we use distance as the score. The second useful item is the horizontal line that crosses the icon. This line represents the size of your curve, or smoothness of the curve. A shorter line will be a sharper curve, and a longer line is a wider, smoother, more gradual curve. Now let's have a look at how that works. First, select the spline point on the curve. Once selected, the left and right triggers adjust the amount of curve. Let's make it smaller and sharper. You see here, if I hold the left trigger, the horizontal line shrinks to nothing, making a sharp angle, which of course is too sharp to ride, indicated by the driving line turning orange and a red warning text at the top of the screen. The right trigger makes the horizontal line longer, and the curve becomes wider and smoother. You also notice the driving line turns back to green, indicating there is not a problem anymore. One thing to note is that the more distance there is between spline points, the easier it is to make a smoother curve. One more thing. When adjusting your driveline with curves, you can scroll through the spline points with the shoulder buttons. Once one spline point is selected, the right shoulder button selects the next spline point, and the left shoulder button selects the previous spline point. Next, let's grab our last checkpoint and copy it. Keep in mind you can copy checkpoints from existing checkpoints, or you can place them from the objects menu. In any case, by default, the first checkpoint on the driving line is always the starting point, and the last checkpoint is always the finish. Let's select the checkpoint and hit triangle to copy it. Copying this checkpoint changes the one we are copying from to a regular checkpoint and makes this new one the finished checkpoint. Now let's drag this new checkpoint down to the last spline point to complete the track. Okay, let's give it a test run. 